Get Ed, a 3D animated show that premiered from 2005 to 2006. It was originally made for the JetX programming block that was closed back in 2010. The show takes place in a futuristic world called Progress City, where portions of the city will flip for a different looking angle, you know, from time to time. And we have a total of five main heroes for this show, Dietz, who I guess can be snarky and fight, or aka the love interest for our more main main hero, Ed. Burn the leader, fizz the brains, and and one I'm pretty sure is straight up B-movie Seinfeld. This is pre-movie career, but I guess in this version they call him Loogie. Oh ho ho, and then you have the most mainest of them all. Ed. He doesn't have a lot going on, but he's special. It is apparently some kind of super genetic tea, and it's still kind of vague on the details of where Ed is from, or like, what anything is, really? But, but there, there's, hmm, there's a- aliens, future, future technology. <sighs> Who programmed you? Mr. Bedlam. In the future, he sent me back for you, Ed. But why me? It was not my place to know. Come on, you're just being ambiguous so you can make all this shit up later and then have a crappy cliffhanger. So one of the major arcs of the series is Ed has these objects that are hidden around the city for him and his friends by something called the Caretaker. Now, of course, most of them are for and only work for Ed himself, but you know, he's the one who has to save the world with his amazing DNA. But you know, friendship morals. But what exactly is this world in danger of? A middle-aged man who decides to use these machines for the very purpose of taking over the world. Kind of a self-destructive plan in that way. Uh, now, if you were wondering what it is our main characters do that could cause them so much trouble with our antagonist, um, uh, they run a delivery service. It's different, I'll give them that. But before we get more into that, let's talk about our bad guy. Our antagonist is a bureaucrat named Bedlam. And you know how some shows have that saving grace like a super good, fun, slash intimidating villain to play around with that's sometimes way too good for that show? This doesn't have that per se. Bedlam as a main antagonist is not particularly bad, just not very interesting as a character or a villain for that matter. We don't really learn enough about him to be that invested. All we really know, he's a not-too-ethical guy who tears down old things and builds newer ones in their place, and can and hmm, probably will screw you over. (coughs) Old school. It is vaguely mentioned that old school, the designated mentor-slash-part-time guardian of all these teens, was once in business with the antagonist, Bedlam. Anthony? Apparently these kids have parents, well, except for Ed, and even some siblings. But they're only briefly mentioned from time to time, and are really just as vague as everything else. I, uh, let's just say the show is really nondescript and everything it doesn't have to directly address. Or it just doesn't feel like it. We never see them anyway, it's pointless to really bring up again, and I'm probably not going to for the rest of this review. Alright, the biggest thing that really works about the character of Bedlam is his cold, menacing voice actor and demeanor. And they won't even know they're working for me. Now back to work. His main plan is to rebuild and destroy and rebuild and... Okay, I mean, that's not the worst villain plan, but again, it's it's more like the bare bones of some evil plan. Like, th- then what? Th- then what are you gonna do? Did he just shoot his laser sword like a gun? That part seems kind of vague, but he is pretty evil. Let's see what else he's got going on. Every day, the people of Progress City produce tons of garbage. It seems worthless, but there is vital information in trash. Vital? What kind of trash are you looking through? This is Stacy Knobloch's house. I went to high school with her, and she was super mean to me. And now I know that she dyes her hair. I mean, that's that's kind of evil. Is I mean, it's kind of more just unethical than anything. It's just garbage. Well, that's what Bedlam hopes you'll think. A person's trash contains a lot of personal information. Oh my god. She has to use prescription strength deodorant. I don't know. Is the dump just full of people's diary pages and embarrassing Christmas photos? Yeah, it's sleazy, but no one's trash is going to be that interesting. (laughs) 
Most episodes consist of the team trying to make deliveries and drops without them being intercepted, which I can see how that can be an important job. It was nice of them to put it in the theme song. Were couriers fight to keep their deliveries away from the evil Mr. Bedlam. So they must be really good at this, right? This week they're up in the courier ranks from number 35 to 28. Wow. Bedlam sure has nothing better to do if all he ever does is intercept level 28 delivery services. Every now and then we get a glimpse of how this world is kind of supposed to work, but there's so many questions that just aren't answered. Sure, Bedlam gets more interested in Ed over time, but so much of the time things just kind of feel unnecessarily empty or blank. Mm. But now's a good time to talk about the animation of the show, which is actually pretty decent, especially for a TV quality. The eyes are a little big though, a little bit uncanny. And every once in a while you get something like this. Something so flat in a world of 3D, and it just looks like you inserted glass shapes from MS Paint. The biggest con of the show, in my opinion, is the action. And the fact that nothing interesting is explained or shown, and we have no investment. Cough, cough. All in all, the action in the show is pretty mediocre. Alright, number one, things could have been choreographed a little bit better, but mostly it's because it's not very suspenseful. But I think this is as big as an issue as it is because it falls into the category of our heroes cannot lose. And that leads to them having to win in kind of convenient ways. Eventually we get bigger and better robots for our heroes to fight in the series, but we still get the same result, so is there even really any point to that? Example, sneaking into Bedlam's tower. So many times in the span of 26 episodes that it really doesn't even mean anything anymore. Especially when they have to go through the same motions in the last episode. You know, we always do the same thing. I have a scheme, you try to stop me, I trap you, I tell you my scheme, you escape, then we fight and I'm defeated. Uh, let's mix it up a little. Yeah, even if we know that the good guys are going to win, that's not really all that surprising. Because we do see it a lot in media. But you can still do things like build up some expectations for your world. Or in other words, you can make it feel earned. And I think that's the most important word I can use. Make it feel earned, not repetitive. Example number two. If they built it up to feel like some kind of endeavor or that our characters made it out at all, would be building up these expectations that I mentioned. This would also serve to make it much more interesting when the time comes that they have to do it again. The writing for the show is pretty subpar too, to the point it's just kind of like, maybe they could have tried a little bit harder. Just, just, just a little bit? Put a little baby carrot into it. Just, just a little more baby carrot effort. Like this line from episode 6. You have been downloaded. Ha, ha, ha. You have been downloaded. So, by definition of the word downloaded, you copied their data? How was that supposed to work for an insult? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a great singer of this for, say, a, a robot-themed rom-com show. And that's when I was like, nah. Ah. Uh, ha ha Z4, how do I say this? Um, you have been downloaded. I am processing your data as we speak. In other words, Z12J, you don't mean. I am knocked up. How? Robot interfacing sex. Oh yeah, let's name it Anne. Designation agreed. I love you. Your love is accepted and returned. Cheesy or clapping next time on two nerd robot marshmallows. Also, did that laser sword shoot like a gun? Also, they carry these grappler tools, and apparently these things are made of steel concrete and Superman soul essence, as they do the most impossible stunts without breaking or, you know, just plain detaching. These things are so powerful, they can attach them to a full-blown truck, and instead of the obvious thing happening, it actually works. I mean, check out these million-ton robots. Yeah, of course, it's so realistic as they just stand there and let you do whatever it is you're doing. Wait, what? What? They've repelled the almighty grappling hook? Impossible. Ho-ho, oh, finally! Well, I guess it's finally time to get some fucking robot fist in your face. Oh, never mind.
Oh no, master the ground, my only weakness, blah, glitch, glitch, blare. Murray, Patty, get on your pets or you're both getting downloaded. No, please, I'd be a horrible baby, Daddy. I've been using the same oil for over three months. But when all is said and done, the first episode isn't all that bad. I'm trying to say something nice about it, okay? On the contrary, it's not a bad way to start your show. The voice acting is legitimately good throughout the whole entire series. And I want to make this clear that this show isn't any kind of failure. It is a show and has some kind of a plot. And the stories it tells are coherent... Well, kind of. Even if not always well-constructed or explained, my biggest guess is that it may have been extremely rushed or perhaps just lacked some experience. But hey, I'm not claiming that I can make the perfect TV show either. My favorite episode is probably this one, just for this one scene. Oh, oh sorry. Excuse me. Oh, pardon me. How you doing? Anthony? So, taking a break from the whole taking over the world thing? Never. But I am trying to enjoy the game. Oh, popcorn? Oh, yes, please. Crouch! That awkward moment when your ex sits next to you and is doing great. But you brought a toaster to fill the void. <gasps> Why do you keep him around? I need the toast. And the love. But seriously, why did I bring my toaster to a sports game? That's just weird. Things start picking up around episode 25. Bedlam decides to give himself Ed's DNA. I'd say that's a pretty easy joke, but so is the whole show. It works, and we get this thing. So is that just, like, his skin? Is that what Ed looks like on, 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 under, under that? On, under all that? The only thing to defeat the bad -o is to find all the keys and use a machine. Each one representing one of Ed's friends or teammates. But, like, half of them don't even make any sense. Like, Deets, what was the test? She walks into her symbol and there's a creature that she used to dream about? She doesn't have to fight it or, or it's not really gross. Like, she has to overcome, like, it being gross, being nice. I don't know. I just don't get what the test is. What's the obstacle? I, I'm just, I don't get it. The only one of these trials that actually turns out to be a test is Burns. Everyone else just does something dumb. Like, I don't even know what Fizz did. I guess spew techno babble. I'm just saying, make it consistent and have them all maybe confront something about themselves. And of course, the bad guy comes back to kidnap the mentor slash guardian for that extra drama for the next episode. Of course, that's when we rescue him almost immediately, making it kind of pointless. The machine, having been confused on who is now the main character, says, Eh, fuck it, and just gives it to them both. And that's when the two Eds become Super Saiyan. The climax fight ranges from about five to six minutes. Should it have been longer? Shorter? I don't know. But Old School makes a sacrifice, possibly making him and Bedlam disappear forever. But luckily, the optimism meter is turned up to 11, so the possibility of them coming back is strong. Ed? You alright? I'm fine. And so is old school. It seemed like they were hinting that another season would be coming, but it was never renewed or continued after that. And to boot, the creator Andy Knight sadly passed away in 2008, so it's more than likely we will never truly solve the mystery of... <laughs> But wait! The review should have ended there, but it doesn't. I've left this part out specifically till the end for anyone who really wants to know the truth. About Git. End. It's one thing that may not fix or explain everything about the show, but it's good enough for me! Where does Ed come from? Yes, the unaired Git Ed pilot has the answers. It's horrible quality and the only one I could find currently online. But here it is! Welcome to Progress City, a future metropolis where speed is king, and one extraordinary kid holds the crown, Ed. Genetically created to be a super soldier for the evil Mr. Bedlam, Ed was rescued by Old School, a computer guru turned mentor, teaching Ed to use his hypergenetic powers to lead the best career team in Progress City. And someone is always trying to get Ed. 
Well, it turns out Bedlam was trying to solve the mystery of his own creation. <laughs> what an idiot. Okay, obviously Ed's origins were changed for the final cut of the show, but I'm still taking it. Ed was created by Bedlam in the future's past or something, and that's the end of that. The rest of the plot is about Bedlam trying to win a trophy that has a dangerous crystal he wants to use for his earthquake machine. But if it's so dangerous, why, why even give it away? Why, why do that? Like, I'm sure gold and money are fine substitutes, but whatever. And that is finally the end of Get Ed. My anaconda don't. My anaconda don't. Done. My anaconda Done. don't want Done. none unless you got Done. buns. Done. Done. Pun. Hey. Boy da, da, toy da, da, named da, da, Troy da, da, used to live da, da, in Detroit. Da, 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 Bought me Alexander da, da, McQueen. He was keeping da, da, me stylish. Da, 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 now that's real, real, real. One in my purse, bitch. I came dressed to kill. I'm on some dumb shit. By the way, what he say? He can tell I ain't missing no meals. Come through and fuck him in my automobile. Let him eat it with his grills and he telling me to chill. And he telling me it's real, that he love my sex appeal. He wants something he can grab. So I shoot him with my laser sword and steal that shoes DNA boy I the chosen one. Bam. Bam.